This is a heart rate monitor that goes around your bicep just up here like this. And this heart rate monitor has shifted my paradigm on heart rate monitors for road cyclists. In fact, I think it could be the most underrated, best cycling training tool that no one really seems to be talking about. To prove this hypothesis, I put up a poll on the RCA YouTube channel and you will see roughly 85% of people have never used or even knew the heart rate arm strap even existed. Also, it appears the new total for polls is now 101%. A rare tech issue for YouTube, but it got me thinking, maybe these are just a triathlete thing. So I reached out to a friend of mine, 2012 Kona winner, Pete Jacobs, and he said, I've never heard of them. So the question then is, why do these seem to be going under the radar, especially when the manufacturer, in this case being Coros, claimed that these arm straps are 95 to 98% as accurate as a chest strap, an accuracy claim. I will be testing eight times in this video, both indoors versus outdoors, at an aerobic base level and at a high intensity level. Comparing the arm strap to a chest strap and even to a wristwatch. But before we go further, please know this video is sponsored by a company called Coros. Reason being, I've recently partnered with them over on my personal YouTube channel due to the release of their new bike computer being the Dura. But for today, in order to try and stay as neutral as possible, I'm gonna stay away from the features and the functions of the arm strap and more so focus on the concept of using the arm strap, because there's a lot of companies that do the arm strap, over the chest strap, assuming you don't have a whole lot of tattoos on your arms. Sorry about that, Thomas. Oh, come on. So in my little bubble, I'm dealing with amateur and recreational road cyclists on a weekly basis, as the Road Cycling Academy is a coaching business. So I've seen firsthand that not all, but certainly a lot of people don't like wearing the chest strap, mainly because it's uncomfortable to wear an elastic strap around your chest, and some people are concerned it may restrict their breathing. So often a lot of people end up not wearing the chest strap or a heart rate monitor at all. The thing about the chest strap though, is that it's essentially an ECG that measures your pulse via electric signals emitted by your heart. And that is the gold standard. In fact, the gold gold standard is the Polar H10, the one that I've got on my chest today and the one that I've used across all the different tests. So it does make sense that the chest strap is the go-to solution for heart rate for road cycling, but it doesn't explain why the arm strap, which uses optical sensors or lights that can measure small changes in blood volume that measure heart rate, are so underrated and no one seems to be talking about them. So let's start the test where I've compared all three heart rate monitors. For the chest strap, we have the Polar H10. For the arm strap, it's the Coros. And for the wristwatch, it's the Coros Product 2, which is quite interesting because the wristwatch uses the exact same sensor as the arm strap which is a multi-channel optical sensor. So these two, it's purely about position on the body and the final note that all the products are basically brand new. So the first ride is a 30 minute recovery ride on the trainer. Purple line is the polar, brown is the arm strap and the turquoise, or I'll be calling it the light blue for this video, is the wristwatch. You can see the wristwatch is way out at times versus the pole and the Coros that are basically together all the way. The next ride is a 45 minute base or zone two ride on the trainer. Here it's just the polar in the purple line and the wristwatch in the light blue line. And as you can see, some really concerning dips of 20 to 30 beats at times. It also took the watch a long time to get going, which we'll discuss why shortly. The final ride with the wristwatch was a short 30 minute VO2 max interval session on the trainer. 30 seconds on, 15 seconds off. Once again, the two lines that remain together are the Coros arm strap and the Polar, although after the initial warm up with some wristwatch inaccuracies in the light blue line again, overall, it's not too bad. In fact, I thought it was gonna fail terribly when I started the intervals, but that is kinda when it worked best. This data validates that wristwatch heart rate data isn't a reliable source, at least for me, and it does raise an interesting point that the fact that this is the same sensor as this, and this is purely about body position. One sensor is further away from the heart and in a part of the body which probably moves around a lot more versus say up here, where your arm is stable, and of course the sensor is closer to the heart. Now let's compare these two straps together solely. This is a 50 minute indoor base training ride. The only thing worth mentioning here, which is actually common across all data sets, is the Coros arm strap in the purple is taking a while to get going, as we saw with the wristwatch earlier. 
It's about 20 seconds into this workout before it kicks in. Why is that? Well, the optical heart rate sensors that are in this are obviously different technology than what's in this. And because of this, particularly as the body warms up, it can take longer for blood flow to increase into the extremities like an arm as compared to the actual signal of a heartbeat in a chest strap. The next workout is an indoor alternating sub-threshold workout for circa one hour. Once again, not much to report on here with the exception of the lag time with the purple line once again being the Coros arm strap. The next workout, I thought I'd see how the Coros would perform outdoors on a longer ride. This is a three and a half hour aerobic based workout and as you can see, it's solid like for like data once again. In fact, the polar chest strap, which is the purple line on this particular chart, had actually had some issues at the beginning of the ride because I definitely wasn't at 75 beats per minute as I took off. In this ride, please ignore the connectivity issues here and here. This is only because I had one head unit on the bike, another one in my rear pocket, and when I walked into the toilet once and into a petrol station to get some food on another occasion, obviously the signals cut out. So this was user error. So the only worthwhile discrepancy here is just over two and a half hours deep into the ride, we have roughly a 15 beat discrepancy for circa 15 seconds. Obviously we've noted in this ride that the Polar isn't 100% reliable either, but looking at the power data above, that appeared to be a Coros reading error, not the Polar. But I feel like I'm really having to dig deep into the data to look for potential discrepancies and issues. So this thing so far, so good. The final test or test that I did was a bunch ride or a race where Physiology is kind of like all over the place. And that's what we have here, the Tuesday World Champs. Although please excuse both head units running out of juice for this particular ride. But we got what we needed now with some discrepancies. Here the Chorus arm strap, which is the purple line, takes almost three minutes to come to life. I hadn't seen that before. Then there's many visible discrepancies within the 70 minute period. Probably the most alarming being this one here where I'm pushing hard towards max which is what the Polar is telling me at over 180 beats per minute, but the Coros arm strap is saying I'm at 153. And it's kind of reading this way for roughly a minute. And I feel if you're in an event or at a race and you're using max heart rate as like a barometer for burning too many matches or fatigue, then this isn't ideal. So how has the strap been such a good player until this point? Was it the right format or was it something else? Digging into the data, kind of reflecting on the ride, that was probably the coldest morning you'll get here on the Sunshine Coast. We're in winter right now. It was six degrees Celsius, which is 42 Fahrenheit. Now, all heart rate monitors, including chest straps, they'll struggle in the cold, but optical sensors will in particular because of the decreased blood flow beneath the skin. You see, the previous outdoor ride I did, which was the three and a half hour aerobic ride, it was probably closer to 15 degrees that morning, or that's 59 Fahrenheit. So I tried another fast bunch ride, which was the longer Saturday bunch ride. And unfortunately, it was another cold morning. We've got a bit of a cold snap going on at the moment. That was about seven to eight degrees that morning, which is 45 degrees roughly Fahrenheit. Touch warmer, but still pretty cold. And this time, the arm strap performed not perfectly, but much better. I was mostly pleased to see it working at max with greater reliability. For this ride, I also did the arm strap up a little tighter. As I noticed in the first bunch ride, getting out of the saddle multiple times, up and down these short, punchy climbs, the strap did feel like it was dropping down a little, and perhaps that arm movement played into the discrepancies along with the cold. So, now you've seen the data and you're not a fan potentially of heart rate monitors that go around your chest, would you use, or would you consider using an arm strap? I'd be keen to get your thoughts below. I should also point out, with the arm strap, it's charged via a magnetic USB cable versus physical batteries that you normally get in a chest strap. And with this unit, you get up to 38 hours of charge with the device automatically going to standby mode when it's not being used. I'd say the only sort of functional disadvantage is it's Bluetooth only, not Ant Plus. 